Gaten McKenzie is in trouble. People are slamming him for what they call his joyride to the Olympics, which seems to be exactly what he got cross with Mama Joy for. Gaten McKenzie spent well over 800,000 Rand of department budget on going to the Olympics for reasons that it is unclear why he needed to be there. But we're going to talk about that in the context of this idea that Michael Bowman from Action SA has put out recently about how our politics is changing and into what he calls Instagram government. And we're going to talk about what that means for South Africa's democracy, for our relationship with politicians and for holding politicians accountable. Spread the fire. This is Weekend Special. As you know, South Africa is a movie and this is the watch party. We have a lot of watch parties in the Three Beanies universe. And thank you so much again to all of the people who found our podcast for the first time this week, Dan Corder in the morning. And if you want to send us a voice note or a text or you want us to talk about anything, 0607613436. You may even hear your voice note or your text read out on our weekday morning news worth knowing podcast. And we are so excited for the next episode of the Dan Corder Show. But you know that already. Monday nights, ENCA, 9 p.m. So there's a very interesting change happening in South African politics right now, led by what I would call a newer generation of South African political leaders. And I'm thinking of Gates and McKenzie, I'm thinking of Fikile Mbalula from the ANC, and I'm thinking of Jordan Hill Lewis, uh, the mayor of Cape Town, and it follows an international trend. So. In the olden days, before social media and content media through the internet, where people could go and build their own celebrity on their own terms with very little cost through their own Twitter and Instagram and even Snapchat, if you wanted to get somewhere in South African politics, you had to rise up within a major political party. That was the forum in which the new political leaders of the country were ultimately picked. And there was little other way for you to build your national renown, your national celebrity, because the media was kind of following the politics of the day, which was party dominated politics. And so the best way to do it was to go through the ANC or the Democratic Alliance. But that has changed now with content creator media. And we've seen this happen all over the world. Kamala Harris's Twitter account is hilarious and full of jokes. Joe Biden's Twitter account releases its own merch. Donald Trump built his own social media platform. And Mayor Pete Buttigieg became incredibly significant from almost nothing very quickly through his good and effective use of on online social media and building his own platform. And then people started to do it in South Africa. And that's caused a real winds of change in South African politics politics because they're all doing it now. Fikile Mbalula has been doing it for years. Gates and McKenzie's Twitter campaign has been massive uh, to raise his own profile along with making sure that he's basically glued at the waist to the spring box whenever they do anything good. And the person who really championed this in South Africa is Jordan Hill Lewis. He was the first one to take international trends of how you perform politics. He became very popular very quickly because he was in the hard hats at the construction sites. He was looking as potholes were filled in. He was at the laying down of new sewage pipes. No matter what you think of Jordan Hill Lewis, his performance. He's very good at the performance of being a good mayor. And so he has got a lot of clout, a lot of respect, a lot of new following. And when the Democratic Alliance did really well in the Western Cape in the last election, in spite of so many people in the Western Cape being so angry with the DA about how they handle and have continued to handle the Israel and Palestine crisis, Jordan Hill Lewis still won by a landslide and did very, very well. And that's testament to how he has performed his politics in his role as mayor. It's just good politics because being a politician should be about becoming as high vis as possible. So we, the voters, know about you, can get a read about you, can understand who you are and who we are giving our vote to. But here's what Michael Beaumont has to say about this, because he is quoted as saying, a tracker of government performance is necessary because it looks like an Instagram government has emerged in South Africa, a government that tends to make announcements and tweets more than it does in terms of policy and legislative reform. We read that there's a war against the construction mafia. Has anyone been arrested? Has there been any investigations? We have people saying this is going to be a fight against corruption, but when they go into cabinet, they sit next to those implicated in corruption. As a country, we need to be alive to the fact that there are alarming patterns in relation to this government, particularly of concern is that we are seeing a multi-party delivery of the same old politics voted out in the 2024 elections. And I hear exactly what Michael Beaumont's concern is about this new trend in the way that politics is being performed online and on social and content driven media in South Africa. Because he is right. Content media allows people to do very good PR for themselves, to build brands and to make it look like they are doing really good work. And if that gets very viral, it might smudge or blur what they are actually doing, which might be very, very little. And that is a danger of this era that South African politics has now entered of this online performance politics that people are able to turn on a PR machine and suddenly people don't know Gates and McKenzie for all the other things he did before he became sports arts and culture minister. Suddenly they now know him as the great champion and spirit guide of South African patriotism through sport. 
I'm going straight to Rahima Musa Hospital where we're going to switch off the oxygen of illegal foreigners. But here's where I tell you why I think that actually this new high-vis politics where politicians are putting themselves in the public attention in the spotlight all the time is really, really good for democracy, for voting, and for holding government accountable. Because in the old days, once again, low-vis politicians, may, like they wouldn't be known to us. We wouldn't know unless the scandal was enormous. We wouldn't know the depths of the cuck that they were catching on. An example right now today is that we all know much more about Zizi Kodwa than former ANC bigwig Pulemabe's corruption case. Even though Pulemabe's corruption case is way bigger, the numbers are way higher, he's lower vis than Zizi Kodwa, who built himself into a real cultural phenomenon. And that means that we know and care less about the Pulemabe allegations. And in my opinion, it is better that we know tons about politicians, that they throw themselves at us, that they put themselves in the limelight, even though it is PR to make themselves look good. So we then know about them. It is way better for us to know what politicians are promising to do and what they are selling themselves as so that we know more about them. And so when they don't do those things, we notice and see and clock those things and then can hold them accountable. I think it is a massive leap forward in terms of accountability and interaction in a healthy democracy between us and the people who we give power to. And that leads me straight to what is happening right now with Gates and McKenzie. When Gates and McKenzie came in, he promised to be the most transparent, the most interactive, the most present, the most in the, like with the people, bringing the people into government and bringing in, them into work possible. And he got a lot of affirmation for that. He did a bunch of things to gain our trust and make us believe that he was the transparency guy who was going to do things differently. He made his own department release lists of how much money different artists were given from COVID relief funds. He raged against the super fans and immediately canceled the contracts of the likes of Mama Joy to win goodwill from us and he continued to be high vis trying to be a good 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 sports arts and culture minister and it is because of that that he is now in so much trouble that is the reason why because he then went to the olympics and people then went how much money was spent on you going to the olympics you did not need to be there and then we found out that over 800,000 rand minimum was spent on his travel and then because he built, has built himself very visibly and publicly into the all access, all honesty, I'm with you guys and I'm telling you what's going on person. And he tweeted this. He said, I demand transparency from others in the sports arts and culture ministry and I should do the same. I shall go public with this answer. And he tweeted the official document saying how much money had been spent on his trip. Flights to Paris, 215,976 bucks. Even if you have a delegation, I'd love for you to go and check how much a there and back flight to Paris is right now. It's not 200K. Insurance, 500 Rand. About accommodation, 113,000 Rand for a four-star accommodation hotel near where the Olympics was happening in Paris. Then something called ground transport, 454,005 of your best South African Randellas. What does that amount of money mean for, for Uber? For an SUV shuttle? Now, Gator McKenzie has said he didn't know about all of this expenditure. He just left it to his department, which is almost, almost worse than him knowing about it because aren't you a bit asleep at the wheel then? It's literally your department. But that's what he said. He said, I'm going to take it up with my department for doing this. And then EFF MP Sinawa Tumbo said something that I think nails it. And I'm just going to read it to you. He said, Mackenzie has now further tied himself to proof that he is not paying attention to the work of his department because he has in his relentless attempt to secure public favor and as a result of his obsession with public praise, written a letter to the acting director general for the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture to clarify the expenditure related to his trip to the Olympic Games. In doing so, McKenzie has tied himself officially to the wasteful expenditure and accepted that he did indeed attend the Olympics. So you see, Gaten McKenzie's high viz twirling in public for all of us to watch and listen to and learn about him and learn what he is trying to sell us has allowed us this moment of going, that's not what you, to you told us you were. That's not what you told us you did. 
And that's why I love this, what Michael Beaumont calls Instagram politics. I want more of politicians demanding our attention, creating a relationship between their brand and our opinion and our vote as a society, making us talk about them. Because the more we know about these politicians, the more we will then be able to hold them accountable and the more they will have to act right. Gayton McKenzie has to redeem his reputation now. He has to act right and behave to regain and restore public trust and confidence in him. And that is exactly what I want our politicians to be obsessed with, sticking by their word and doing their jobs. So I think that this is a wonderful, wonderful moment. And Michael Beaumont, I understand your concerns. I get it. I understand that it is scary and a little bit unnerving that politicians now have the power to try and drag away attention from matters of parliament sometimes to the narrative that they want to spin about themselves. But in them doing that, we also have power as people who can tweet, as people who can influence public opinion, as people who can make videos, because we are all also content creators if we choose to be on the internet, everybody is. We also have power to then talk back and then say, but you're not sticking with your word and we're going to talk about it and that high business makes a more lively and healthy democracy greater accountability and incentivizes politicians who now have to do this they have to be public high vis figures and they have to uphold their brand in a more particular and thoughtful and consistent way which makes them better politicians and incentivizes them to keep their promises to us and i think that's great i'll spread that